Hey, I wanted to show you my logistics robot simulation, which is part of Virtual Colony. This is our little open source project. Uh, it runs in a browser. This is Unity's WebGL. So we sh we get uh, so we have this little uh, virtual Mars colony. Going to be looking at this lo lo uh, logistics robot. So uh, if I so I, as you start off walking around in the colony. So I'm you, you walk around with WASD. So the, 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 there's our little robot. So what I'm going to do, I, I want to drive the robot, so I'm just going to walk up to it, and uh, that immediately drops me into a mode where I'm, uh, I'm now driving the robot. So now WASD is going to be driving the robot, so I can drive the thing around. Uh, I can press F to, to move this robot arm forward, and uh, the arm is holding a 1S uh, logistics box, and this is a little sheet metal box that we're thinking uh, could be sort of a standardized replacement for uh, cardboard boxes that's a, a lot more automation friendly. So essentially we've got this little blade on the front of our robot and uh, I can kind of plow boxes along and then there's a sheet metal, there's a little sheet metal lip formed into each box. So if I just raise my blade I can go and pick up boxes. Now uh, just being able to pick up and put down boxes could be a huge, like a transformative thing uh, for logistics. If everything's in boxes, then uh, uh, th th that are that are a standardized size that can be sort of manipulated by by robots. That's super duper valuable, especially if uh, you can you can make the boxes take up less uh, less floor space by stacking them. So surprising thing about this, so we have this blade that's designed to let us pick up and put down boxes. And uh, essentially, if I put down another box, now getting them to line up just right is uh, always hard. I can see my angle is actually not not too good. I'm going to try and, uh, so I'm, I'm driving the robot around a little bit. Uh, try and, so essentially, I just need to be over this way just a little bit more. Here's where mechanum wheels or more uh, uh, more degrees of freedom on that robot arm would certainly make the alignment task easier. But uh, honestly, if we can fix these problems in software, that's certainly going to be uh, less less investment to start with and less maintenance uh, in the long run. Uh, so surprising part about this, right? So this is Unity Physics, right? And uh, I can stack them fairly badly, uh, but then I, I should be able to sort of so this is either going to make a mess or it's going to line up these boxes. Hey, okay. almost, oh, almost made a mess. Uh, close, those are not, not quite lined up uh, correctly. Oh, they're, they're, and, uh, okay, I had it. I, I had it. So, uh, Clearly, autonomy is really important, and this is something that uh, it really we need to figure out. Okay, so I can see that I, I have uh, I have those two boxes lined up correctly. So I'm going to back up and lower at the same time. Yeah, and uh, uh, coordinated motion like driving forward and raising, or uh, driving backward and lowering. This is something that's much easier for a computer program to do. I have to press two two buttons at once. So again, a, uh, R raises my robot arm. F sort of moves it back and um, or moves it forward. So the, the robot arm is designed to be able to reach either the uh, a box on the ground or a box that's uh, on top of another box. So essentially I can make two high stacks of boxes using the basically direct manipulation of the boxes. Uh, surprising fact about this, and I didn't really realize this when I was designing the robot, but uh, uh, if, you, if you can make a two high stack, you can basically, and here I'm gonna try a coordinated motion to back up and raise to, to lift that up. So I can, I can lift a stack of two boxes, which I think physically possible. The, the forces involved on my little, uh, uh, this little wrist, uh, which is, uh, is active in this, uh, this version, but those get fairly extreme. And of course I could make a mess if I dump uh, one of those boxes off. So let me get that uh, lined up again. Uh, so if, if you can do this now, of course, my driving is a little a little squirrely here because I have a lot more weight taken off of my drive wheels. But th these two boxes are empty, so uh, I'm not encountering a center of, uh, center of mass problem quite yet. Uh, surprisingly enough, I can, I can make a three high stack of boxes if I can just now line up the stack. And uh, again, doing this manually is uh, probably not the right thing for any planet. Uh, Human beings should not be uh, doing logistics. This is something we should be able to just automate. Uh, 
things in the boxes would be basically everything that we use cardboard boxes for on Earth. So shipping products around, getting food to people. Uh, I think you could even you could even move like uh, uh, bulk bulk uh, chemicals like uh, uh, the CO2 scrubber that we'd be using on Mars. Oh my gosh! Just fast forwarding through the failure. Let me tell you about the robot. We've got two drive motors and an arm up and down motor. This version also has a wrist motor. Uh, it should be physically plausible, physically constructible this way. We counted it to be buildable. Oh, perfect. Okay, so I can, I can get, get a box uh, vertical again. Of course, this would not be. None of this would be good if, uh, if, if your your box is full of cereal or something, and that's definitely not, uh, not things that you want to have be kicked across the dusty surface of Mars. That would not be, uh, not be a good thing. Uh, but a uh, surprising fact here, like I can go and I can I can kind of recover from failures. And then I can go and stack, uh, restack boxes. Uh, and, and again, this is, the, it, actually, heck, uh, this, this robot is designed to not just sort of do logistics, like move boxes around inside a warehouse, but uh, the, these, these little yellow things are habitats where human beings would live. So let me go and uh, I'm going to drive up to the airlock and uh, see if I can go ahead and make a delivery. So this, uh, the, the airlock is programmed to automatically respond when a robot is nearby. So it's, it's going to open up. I've, uh, we have the fastest cycling airlocks imaginable just because otherwise it's too boring to, to sit there and watch the airlock, airlock pump, uh, pump air in or out uh, for, uh, for minutes at a time. So essentially, I've just driven into somebody's house here, and they literally have no objects yet. So let's uh, let's give them some objects. So they now have a 1S box, and uh, cool. So now I'm going to drive back out. Just to show it's possible here, I'm stacking up three boxes, one one at a time. It uh, The driving gets trickier and trickier as the stack gets taller and taller, but there is nothing physically preventing this from, from happening. Clearly, all of this would need to be automated to really be feasible. If you want to get good performance out of your OpenGL, your WebGL, in, that, uh, in a web browser, uh, if you go to Graphics Settings on Windows and just make sure that you've got, uh, you have your browser set to high performance, the default seems to be power saving. If you've got two GPUs, one of which is not nearly as good, it'll default to the not nearly as good GPU for a web browser to save uh, battery. I uh, should say, there's a lot of other interesting stuff in the virtual colony. This is an open source project with uh, architects and uh, 3D modelers and some people doing, a few people doing the Unity stuff. So if, if you know Unity or you'd like to learn, we'd, uh, we'd love to, to have your help.